This is not a new concept. This uh, has been discussed under Trump one, under Biden. But uh, we are in the race. We're in a race to the moon. That was Transportation Secretary and Acting NASA Administrator Sean Duffy announcing Tuesday that expedited plans for the U.S. to build a nuclear reactor on the moon are in the works. Here's a bit more from Duffy. To have a, a base on the moon, we need energy. And uh, some of the key locations on the moon, we're going to get solar power. But uh, this vision technology is uh, critically important. And so we've spent hundreds of million dollars studying can we do it. We are now going to move beyond studying and we are going, we have given direction to go, let's start to deploy our technology to move to actually make this a reality. Politico first obtained and reported on the directive. It instructs the U.S. government to, quote, move quickly before terrestrial rivals. Duffy adds that the first country to succeed in building a reactor could potentially declare a keep out zone. Per reports, China and Russia have announced in a handful of occasions that together they plan on building a lunar nuclear reactor by the mid-2030s. Reactions abounded on X. Midas Touch editor Ron Pukowski posted on X, quote, Our airports are a mess, but the good news is we have a reality TV show guy and a Fox News host who's in charge of that and a lot of other stuff while building a nuke plant on the moon. Secretary of Energy Chris Wright is all about lunar nuclear. He took to X, writing, quote, the U.S. put people on the moon. Can we build nuclear reactors again? Absolutely. Is it going to be a challenge? Yes. But can we do it? With President Trump's bold leadership, yes, we will. So I find this story really fascinating. At first blush, I was like, what? on the moon? That's crazy. <laughs> and then I found out that previous administrations have been talking about this, that other countries are talking about it. And so it does seem like a national security interest of the United States to make sure that they're the first ones there to try to prevent these other countries. And there is a lot of concern that people have about nuclear power plants being next to their homes. It is obviously a very cheap, reliable form of energy, but if they're, the disasters are few and far between, right? It's one of the right. safest actually. But, uh, Nobody wants to be in the line of fire if, God forbid, one of those plants does have an issue. So the idea of actually separating it from Americans and putting it on the moon, I guess, kind of makes sense. I think, you know, like I said, it can be brushed over like, what is this? So I'll start with the good stuff, right? This isn't just about going to space or exploration. This is about like infrastructure and resources on a new frontier, right? right. We always have to be building it on the forefront, especially it brought rang my ears when I heard China and Russia are trying to do this first. It provides a, a security issue, national security. Like things, they shouldn't be ahead of us. It's like the arms race all over again. That's it right. feels like that. Um, but on the other hand, hearing this uh, major announcement come from Sean Duffy at this time, I think there's validity in saying, hey, look around. You worried about the roads and the FAA and all the other things you have to monitor. Like maybe create a commission that could work on this, but you should be busy with telling us why people are flying out of airplanes on slides, on the runway. You know, I can name the incidents, right? Since the accident here in D.C. earlier this year, the unfortunate accident, there's been several incidents, and it seems like at the time, there was a call to blame that on possibly DEI from our president. The conversation should be elevated and we should stop seeing this. And I know I've talked to FAA administrators and they've been like, the airlines are safe. These incidents are blown up because we're hyper focused on them. But as the act or as the administrator there, Sean Duffy really has a, a responsibility to make the American public feel comfortable with getting around on land in the sky or on the ground. And he's talking about um, something that people don't see as an imminent issue. And when we talk about what voters want, like we have been earlier in uh, the show, I don't know that people are calling for this right this second. And if they are, perhaps other people need to be tasked with doing this. Yeah, I hope that the priority is on air travel. We have seen that become a mess over the past five or six years. Really, since the pandemic, a lot of air traffic controllers and pilots leaving the industry for a multitude of reasons and staffing up those uh, positions should be a, a priority for the administration. I've been generally fairly pleased with some of the results and actions we've seen as a result of that DC crash. Uh, we learned in the immediate aftermath that there had been a lot of reports on a, a public reporting system for pilots um, where they had talked about issues at DCA for years, um, right. particularly on runway 33 where the accident happened, and talked about helicopters uh, flying too high um, and getting too close to airplanes and how many you know, near misses there had been. Um, there had, uh, Secretary Duffy added uh, basically a ground stop on, uh, on planes 
when helicopters are moving through the area now, which is good news, but obviously more should be done to make sure Americans feel comfortable with air travel. Right, and we definitely have room to grow in that area. That does it for us on Rising Live. Look out for more exclusive YouTube content coming your way today. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to The Hill's YouTube channel so you never miss any content. And for those of you who like to listen on the go, we're available anywhere you listen to podcasts. See you next time.